pointers. Every variable is a memory location, and every memory location has its address, which can be accessed using ampersand operator, which denotes an address in memory. So here we have here an example code, and we declared two variables. One is an integer variable, and the other one is a character variable or character array. In the printf statement, we place here ampersand var1, that's the name of the variable, and ampersand var2. So the output of this will be something like this. So this one is actually the address of var1, and this is the address of var2. What are pointers then? A pointer is actually a variable whose value is the address of another variable. That is, direct address of the memory location. And how we declare pointer variables? So we declare pointer variables using this syntax. The data type followed by asterisk and then the variable name. And then, of course, semicolon to end the statement. So here are several examples. We have integer asterisk IP. So that means this is an integer pointer. Double asterisk DP, float asterisk FP, and car asterisk CH. The actual data type of the value of all pointers, whether integer, float, character, or otherwise, is the same. It is long, it is actually a long hexadecimal number that represents a memory address. How to use pointers? There are a few important operations which we will do with the help of pointers very frequently. So we define a pointer variable, then usually we assign the address of a variable to a pointer and finally access the value at the address available in the pointer variable. So here's an example. So we have here a variable with the value 69. And then here we have here now a pointer variable, so integer asterisk IP. And then what we did here is to assign the address of the variable var to IP, because as we have said a while ago, IP here is a pointer variable. So it will contain the address of another variable. So in this case, IP will contain the address of the variable var. So if we print the address of variable or the var variable, it will place here the address. So in this example, it is 62FE14. That is actually in hexadecimal value because we use asterisk x. That means it is in hexadecimal. So the address is stored in the pointer variable should be the same because the address of var is stored in IP. So if we're going to look at the output, the address is stored in IP variable, which should be the same. Then access the value stored using the pointer. So how do we access the value using the pointer? So we use asterisk IP. So the value, sorry for this, of asterisk IP variable, percent D, then we use asterisk IP. So it will access the value inside that address. So this is the address. What is the value inside this address? It is actually 69. So it will now display here the value 69. Null pointers. It is always good practice to assign a null value to a pointer variable in case you do not have an exact address to be assigned. This is done at the time of variable declaration. A pointer that is assigned null is called a null pointer. The null pointer is a constant with a value of zero defined in several standard libraries. So th this is an example. Integer asterisk ptr is equal to null. Now, how do we check if a pointer contains null value? We could do any of the following. So if ptr... So if this is true, that means P is not null. 
or if not PTR succeeds if P is null. So it just reverse. But this is how we test if a pointer contains null value. Pointers in detail. Pointers are many but easy concepts and they are very important to C programming. The following important pointer concepts should be clear to any C programmer. So pointer arithmetic, we'll be discussing this later. And then array of pointers, pointer to pointer, passing pointer to functions in C, return pointer from functions in C. So we'll not be discussing some of these. So let's first discuss pointer arithmetic. So we can use plus plus operator to add to a pointer. So PTR plus plus after the operation of the pointer will be pointing to the next address. So the next address is not necessarily the next value because it depends on the size of the variable that the particular pointer is pointing to. Let's say, for example, we have an integer pointer. Then in most cases, an integer is composed of four bytes. So if it is composed of four bytes, let's say, for example, the first address is 1000, then the next address should be 1004. And then the next address to that should be 1008, so it should be four bytes should be added. We can also use PTR minus minus, and then that means we are pointing to the previous pointer or we're moving the pointer to the previous pointer. Again, it depends on the size of the variable the pointer is pointing to. So here's an example. In this code, we declared an array with three elements. So we have 10, 100, and 2,000. Then we declared another variable i that will be used as our loop counter. And we declared a pointer, which is an integer pointer. And then on the next line, what we did here is to assign the address of the variable array to pointer, to our pointer. And take note, that an array name with no index returns the address of the first element of the array. Okay, so it returns the first, the address of the first element of the array. So here we have a loop from zero to i lesser than max. So that's, that is three, that is from zero to two, which is actually the indices of our array. Increment by one. So print f address of var percent d that's the address of the of the uh, elements of the array is equal to percent x. So when i is zero, we're pointing out to the first element, and then it displays here the address. And then on the next line, displays the value inside that particular address. So how do we display the value? Again, we use the asterisk operators, asterisk PTR. So then after that, we proceed to the next address. So we have your PTR plus plus. So let's take a look at the output. So the first line displays address of var zero equals, so that's the address of the first element of the array. And the value inside that element or the value inside that address is actually 10. So that's the first element. So once we use PTR++, we go to the next address. So you notice here, the address increased by four because the size of an integer is actually four bytes. So the address now is 62FE04, and the value inside that address is actually 100. Then again, on the next loop, we increase or we add to our pointer. So we're now on the next address, which is 62FE08. And then the value inside that is 200. So that's an example pointer arithmetic where we use plus plus. Similarly, we can also use pointer minus minus. So again, almost similar to the previous program, we have an array of integers, pointer i and the pointer. But this time around, we point to the last element of the array. 
So that is var indexed by 2. That's why we have var max minus 1. That's 3 minus 1. So that's, that is indexed by 2. So to get the address, we use ampersand. So the address of the last element is stored in our variable pointer. The same, we display the address of the current element and then display the value. But in our loop, we start with the last or second or with the last element. That's why we have pre max minus one. So that is two. From two to zero. We're going to look from two to zero and we decrease the value of i. So initially it will display the address of the, this element indexed by two. Two hundred. It's the value. And then PTR minus minus, that means we go to the previous uh, previous address. That's why you notice from uh, ending with 0, 08, the next it ends with 0, 04. So that's a previous address. And then again, minus 4 again. So we, it ends now with 0, 0. So similar with pointer plus plus.